The neurology highlights are being delivered this year by Dr. Henrik Bartel, who joins me now to give us a little bit of a preview. I know you have been working diligently on this. Yeah, one of the, the new things uh, as compared to last year is really that we now at this conference see a large number of high quality presentations dealing with a novel imaging technology, namely hybrid PET MRI to diagnose brain disorders. This uh, hybrid PET MRI technology now allows us to acquire PET data and MR data at the same time in one session in a so-called one-stop shop approach. And we now learn in this conference that uh, this not only simplify, simplifies imaging, but also improves the diagnosis of many brain disorders. Uh, it is now possible to acquire molecular information from the PET component of the system and at the same time uh, structural, blood flow, but also network connectivity information out of the brain. And that helps a lot as we learn now to improve diagnosis not only of brain tumor patients, but also of dementia, movement disorders, epilepsy and other disorders. So taking together this hybrid PET MRI technology together with some other exciting tracer developments is it, really driving the neuroscience field at the moment. That sounds like it's going to help with not only accuracy but the speed with which diagnosis happens and then treatment begins to help pa patients. That's a great advancement. Absolutely. Are there other advancements that you're talking about in research or collaboration? Yeah, one of the great breakthrough uh, this year really uh, relates to the fact that we now have a new concept uh, to diagnose some uh, really important disorders in neurodegeneration. For instance, the, uh, the common uh, dementia form Alzheimer's disease. Uh, there is this uh, new idea that uh, we shift uh, the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease from uh, testing for uh, cognitive symptoms uh, uh, now we do biomarker-based uh, uh, diagnosis and uh, PET, namely amyloid PET and tau PET, is really um, uh, great uh, tools. Are really great tools to provide these biomarker information. The problem is that we, as we learned from uh, last, uh, uh, from the recent years, doing amyloid PET and tau PET, that. Uh, this, um, this phase of the Alzheimer's disease uh, in which you have symptoms is preceded by a very long so-called prodromal phase and um, uh, it helps a lot to establish an early diagnosis uh, to do these biomarker based diagnosis and that is not, not only helpful for an earlier diagnosis but also gives uh, inspiration for the testing of new therapeutic approaches which uh, hopefully in the end will help our patients. And how is this research impacting the future? What do you see as we look down 10, 20 years down the line? Yeah, one, one prediction would really be that we in the future, uh, at least once there are drugs available to treat certain conditions in Alzheimer's disease, uh, certain pathologies that we we come to a situation where we are able to test uh, by use of by the use of PET imaging uh, patients at risk of suffering from this condition, and and then initiate a treatment or even prevention of the disease by uh, applying certain uh, therapeutic procedures. It would be amazing to try to intervene absolutely. earlier and improve the quality of life and, for and patients. Absolutely, and and PET imaging has a great potential in this regard. Yeah. It's wonderful. Thank you so much, Doctor. You're welcome.